All right, so for this lesson, we're just continuing to work with exponential functions, focusing on some transformations, as you can tell from the title. So in general, uh, first I just say f of x is an exponential function of some base, where again, the base of an exponential function cannot be 1 and must be positive. Right, we talked about that last day. So as long as f of x represents some uh, exponential function, then everything you see below, uh, you know, this is in function notation, this is the equ actual equation, should look pretty familiar. And so that a value, the b value, the h, and the k, um, whatever those are, we can see all those transformations. And I'm most interested in what we see from right here. So the a value, again, is our vertical stretch. by a scale factor of a. And if a is negative, uh, it's also a reflection, vertical reflection. And again, we can see that right here as well. But honestly, the, on the left, that's just in general in function notation. We've been talking about that since the beginning of the course. So we want to analyze these things from seeing the equation um, as is on the right. And so the b value, notice it's in the exponent. That is a horizontal stretch. And I hope you know everything I'm going to say here by a scale factor of 1 over b, not b. And if b is negative, it's also a horizontal reflection. I'll just say reflection because it's all horizontal here. And lastly, the h and the k, these are the translations. So h is a horizontal translation. I'll say minus h units. And k is the vertical translation. Just k units, up or down. All right, honestly, I'm bored of talking about that because it's come up so much. It'll come up one more time. We deal with logarithms. In some ways, I feel like it's, I don't need really need to say that. We've been talking about these things throughout the course. But really, again, the main part is being able to see all that from looking at an equation in that form. All right, and that's what we see right here. Here's an equation. Uh, we need to think about what's happening here. Uh, first, we need to realize if, you know, whatever we look at, uh, let's say, for example, this negative here. If we think that's a vertical reflection, well, that's correct. But a vertical reflection of what? Um, this plus 3 right here and this plus 1. The plus 3 does represent 3 to the left and 1 up. But again, what is being moved 3 to the left? What is being moved 1 up? What is being reflected? And that's all based on the fact that we have a base of 2 here. And so I have an exponential function of a base of 2. So I'm thinking about 2 to the power of x being vertically reflected, being moved left 3 and up 1. And that's the key, because all those statements of transformations mean nothing on their own in terms of you know, trying to visualize the graph until we know what is being reflected in this case. And so first, let's start with a basic graph of what 2 to the power of x looks like. And all exponential functions go through 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8. And I'll even do one of these back here, negative 1, half. So that is what. I'm visualizing all these transformations on. And so the vertical reflection I'll do first. And so all these points are being reflected vertically. Since we've done this a lot in the course, I do hope you can do it pretty much as quickly as I'm doing it. And then lastly, all I want to do is take these points and move them three to the left and one up. Now, I know there's going to be a horizontal asymptote. As usual, when we have asymptotes, I prefer, I recommend drawing them before I sketch up my final function. And so I can see the asymptote is going to be 1 above the x-axis. And So if I put that now, it, it kind of gives me a bit of a structure to work around. And the rest, I'll just kind of draw these points now. Um, so move all these points 3 to the left and 1 up. So if I start with this one, 3 to the left, 1 up, should be right here. And just do the same for all of them. 
So it should have an x-intercept of negative 3. And in this case, a y-intercept of negative 7. Since I've drawn my horizontal asymptote already, gives me a nice sort of structure to work around. Got lots of detail. Nice, very accurate graph drawn relatively quickly. And as always, the idea is we understand these transformations. We understand why the graph looks like this. All right, uh, let's go on to the next one. And again, I see some transformations, but based on what? So the first thing I want to realize right away is I'm dealing with 1 half to the power of x being transformed. And so I'm going to actually sketch out 1 half to the power of x right now. 1 half to the power of x, conveniently enough, was also in our notes. So it looks like this. Now let's sketch these ones. So again, all the transformations I'm about to label refer to this function here. And so what do I see here? Uh, two transformations. x is being divided by 3. That's the same x as x being multiplied by 1 third. That means there's a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of 3. So again, dividing by 3, same as multiplying by 1 third. And again, the scale factor is always the reciprocal of what's being multiplied to x. And then down 5. And so the horizontal stretch by a scale factor of 3, I'll show that in red first. I want to take all these points here and triple the x-coordinates. So my y-intercept will not change, but all the rest will. So now I have this. This is 1 half to the power of x over 3. And now I want to take this and move it down 5 units. I'll draw the asymptote right now. And then just move these points down 5 units. There we go. Notice if I don't draw the asymptote, I'm implying this graph keeps going down forever. I'm implying it has a range of all real numbers, and it doesn't. So again, that asymptote is key. It's the only way to show that this graph doesn't keep going down forever. Otherwise, that's what it's saying. All right, which leads me to the final problem. I don't need a lot of notes for this. Um, and so again, I have some actual data here. This time referring to showing the US weekly box office returns for Avengers Infinity War, or the first 10 weeks of release. And so what you see here, each of these points, is the actual data for how much um, revenue, which just means the money that came in, for this movie in week one. So I can see in week one, for example, the week it was released, uh, it made between three, you know, roughly 330, 340 million American dollars uh, in that first week, again, the US. And then the second week, I can see it made just shy of $150 million in that week, and so on. Okay, and this is the actual data. Although, even though it is actual data, uh, modeling something pretty complex, I mean, sorry, not modeling, this is the actual data showing something, which is pretty complex, which is, you know, the spending habits really of all these people in a large country on a certain movie. But it does have, you know, the characteristics of exponential decay, which means I shouldn't expect to be able to come up with a perfect model, but I should be able to come up with a decent model for this because it definitely looks like exponential decay. And so that's my main question. Determine an exponential function that models weekly revenue, R, so an R to stand for weekly revenue, so how much money it made in any particular week, where the input is the week number. Now notice, when we talk about a movie being released, we talk about how much money it made in the first week, the second week, the third week. We don't talk about the zeroth week, the first week. We start with one, which means this quite nicely lends itself to a geometric sequence. It's also, the information is discrete. We talk about how, how much money it made in the first week, how much money it made in the second week. We don't talk about how much money it made in the first one and the third weeks. Um, so what we have here is perfectly well suited to a geometric sequence, which is again a type of exponential function. Uh, but in, right up to the fact that it's discrete, it just points, and that we're starting with one. And so I'm going to model this as a geometric sequence. And so any geometric sequence, remember, can be modeled as Tn 
is T1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. So in this case, Tn, the term number, is the weekly revenue. The first term I said is about 340, I'll say. Again, I am estimating. $340 million. And then the key is what's the common ratio to the power of n minus 1, n being the weak number. That's the variable I want. So how do I find the common ratio? Well. Let's look, at my, let's look here. And again, this is actual data, so I don't want to jump to a conclusion too quickly. But if I look at the second point here, this seems to be about, uh, I don't know, just shy of, let's say 150, basically. This is about 340. So to go from th 340 to 150, well, let's see. I've got to multiply by about 0.44. That's it. It's a really bad idea if I just leave it at that. Um, again, I'm looking at actual data. And so I can't, it's a terrible assumption to assume that it's always going to be about 0.44. So let's look at the next one. Um, from 150 to about what was it, 80, let's say. 80 divided by 150 is about 0.53 now. So not surprisingly, it's not the exact same thing. But it is also not surprisingly, it's close. Uh, if, if it was vastly different from one to the next, this wouldn't look like an exponential decay. So let me look at this one right here. This looks like about. 40. Well, I don't need a calculator to know. That means about 0.5. And this one here looks like uh, about 25. And 25 divided by 40 is about 0.6. Which again, you may think those are the big variation, but no, there's not. Um, that's it's all pretty darn close to a half. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to say, I mean, they're all pretty similar. Again, if if there was a vast difference in how much it changed from one to the next, it wouldn't behave so similarly to a exponential decay curve. And so I'm going to go with r being a half, or about 0.5. Okay? There is no perfect answer, but there's just better than others. And this seems like a pretty decent uh, estimation of how it's changing. And so now I'm done the first question. The revenue can be thought of as the 340 million times 1 half to the power of n minus 1, which again is a geometric sequence. And remember, all geometric sequences are exponential functions. The difference between, you know, the main difference is that geometric sequences, like all sequences, are discrete. They're points, and it has a starting point. And we start at one always, and that's exactly what this has here. So while I'm done that, uh, I can now use this to predict. Oh yeah, how much it made in the six-week release. So let's see. I can see it actually made whatever that is. You know, it's getting a little hard to tell. That looks like about. I don't know, 20 ish million dollars. That's it. I could just Google it. I mean, all this data is came from that, or I can just go to my calculator also to estimate. Again, this is not going to tell me exactly what it is, but 340 times 0.5 to the power of 6 minus 1, to the power of 5. So this gives me about 10.6 million. It looks okay. Uh, but what I'm more interested in now is in this last question predict the total box office gross for Avengers over its entire theatrical run, not just the first 10 weeks. So how much money do we think this movie made in total in the United States before it stopped running in theaters? Well, what that really means is I want to add up all these points here plus all the ones after it. Again, not just the first 10 weeks, which means I want to find the sum of all the points in this. Now, in reality, the movie did stop running at some point. But for sake of our model, I can think of this as a series that runs forever, an infinite geometric series. And so I can just add up all the points. And remember, finding the sum of a geometric series that goes on forever is only possible if your series converges. And that's exactly what we see happening here. It's getting closer to zero. Over time, the movie's making less and less money. And so I know I can find an estimate of how much money the movie made in total by adding up all the terms. And remember, if I want to find the sum of an infinite number of terms, it was a very nice, pleasant formula for something pretty abstract. It was just the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. And so in this case, the first term is about $340 million. The common ratio is about a half, which is 340 divided by a half, same as 340 times 2, which is 680. So according to my really quick, I mean, <laughs> that took me a few seconds, uh, but just based, and, and this is really just based on the first few weeks. Um, that one half, I only paid attention to the first four or five points. So just from looking at the first few weeks and doing a really quick calculation here, 
my estimation is that this movie will make or made um, about six hundred million dollars, six hundred eighty million dollars in revenue in the United States because all this data is from the United States. And um, if I just go to my web browser here, uh, I just quickly Googled how much money this movie actually did make in the United States in its release, and it was six hundred and seventy-eight point eight million dollars. Um, so what that tells me is this model is pretty accurate because uh, it kept, you know, it was pretty predictable how much money it made each week. It was roughly a half every time. So again, that's a pretty good prediction. Um, I really just used the first few weeks of information and made a prediction that ended up being, in this case, extremely accurate. About 678.8 million as opposed to 680 million. That's pretty good. All right. So uh, with that said, I'm done. <laughs>